What's up everybody, this is D from Brooklyn, and I'm bringing you a Sunday Swim special rainy day update. We're about to get a little wet, so grab your umbrella, grab your galoshes, and let's go. From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Enough of the Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ba. Yo, it is pouring down rain in today, people. And as you can see, I got a dozen ways to collect that rainwater because you know what time it is. It's springtime, and I'm out here getting that tub ready for summer tubbing. So I'm going to go into a little bit of maintenance and just give you the introduction to opening up and setting up the tub for that, you know, springtime and summer fish outside projects that we all grown and know and love. Well... There's a few things that I'm going to have to do because first and foremost, I know I may or may not have shown you in the last update that this little screen cover I have made is getting really beat up. I think it's about three years old now. It's exposed to elements and you can see I get a lot of cats back here. The birds dance and sing on it and it's a little flimsy. So I know I'll be doing that over. One of the obvious things that you're going to know about setting up a summer tub is where do you get your water from? Now, the last couple of years, I've not been using house water or hose water. I've been collecting rainwater. And wow, that has made a tremendous difference in two things, the breeding and uh, B, my water bill. Because water in New York has been getting crazy. <laughs> the water is crazy. And I've noticed that I've been able to breed fish outside that I cannot breed inside. And one of the things that I'll... Uh, attribute that to is the use of rainwater. So um, I'm cleaning out the tub here because there's leaves and and schmutz and and everything in here. So I cleaned it out. I didn't have it standing. I just go over with the net and any particulate that I didn't. I did clean it out the old-fashioned way, but you know, you still since it's sitting outside, you get sediment because this is actually underneath my grapevine and I think that's one of the good things too sorry to jostle you around but that's one of the good things too because I get a lot of natural um, um, tannins and everything from the rainwater running through the grapevine when this is all filled in in the spring as you can see with my hedge which has become a tree that will become complete greenery and the water runs through that and actually creates a lot of tannins you'll see this water's crystal clear people I don't use any filters um, I use my little pond pumps I hope you guys can hear me because as always D is always multitasking because I'm showing you a real deal um, you know, I always keep it 100 so if you're doing it at home you don't get any surprises um, cleaning out look at all that schmutz in there that's just particulate that's floating you know just from the leaves and and it's natural because in the wild guess what they get particulates and leaves and dirt and everything else in there um, yeah a lot of stuff in there so the water is actually super duper clear which is awesome I'm just gonna do this a couple more times and uh, this is a lot of rainwater this is actually one night of rain it's raining still now. I hope my camera ain't getting jacked up. That's why they have repair centers. <laughs> I got a lot of wood and leaf litter. And a lot of it I'm going to leave in there because I want the leaf litter. And I want that natural tannins for my fish. Um, one of the other things that I'm going to do, because I'm going to try some... Uh, I may put some killifish out here. I may even try to breed some uh, so harder to breed uh, Daniels and terrestrial type. Uh, I don't know if they're really terrestrial, but some different types of fish here. Yeah, look at that, man. I got to get in there. Wash all the panels out. You know, this is all from all the plant growth. And this is not dirt. This is just remnants from all the... Uh, leaves and everything that were in there last year they create a lot of sediment and the fish actually use that to breed up and they'll usually breed up um this is my little net if you didn't see my dollar store video i got this from the dollar store now you know what i use it for very small holes because i breed some very small fish and when the fryer is small i use that to capture them 
But you may be saying, D, yo, what the Smurf is that? That is not a Smurf, but that is going to be my outdoor little uh, egg capturing device. So you'll see a little more of that later as the year goes by. But I'm going to put my artificial grasses, or maybe I'll just put some real grass and leaves and stuff in there. Uh, let me show you that. This thing just came crashing down because it's all beat up, so I had to jack it up. <laughs> real life problems, real life stuff. But back to that, you can see this is a six foot tub. So if I'm breeding fish, I can move the parents into this box, have them lay their eggs in there, and then I'll just remove the eggs and release the eggs into the tub. I may keep the parents in there. I may not. I may do the opposite, but we'll find out as the spring comes by what works the best. Look at all that water running down. I'm going to show you that. But the moral of this is to make it easier for me to capture the eggs and I may even bring the eggs inside the house. I'm just trying to figure out what's going to be easier because it can be very, very difficult to capture fry out here. So that's going to be one of the projects. So if you're not a subscriber right now and you're not getting all this good information, you better hit the subscribe button because I'm going to be bringing you from start to finish as I do every year. So if you guys want to try a little outdoor tub, you don't have a pond, you can't put it in the ground. You can do like I did, get a tub, a trough. A Rubbermaid container that's very, you know, like I showed you in some older videos and do it yourself But look at all this water. This is about 20 gallons of water Now I'll go into my little archive and get some rock work some structure set up here while the water is curing I'll set up a little structure some caves spawning sites Over the horizon. And now there you have it. We got water in here. We got structure in here. We got some rock work in here. All we have to do is give it a little time, let the temperature get up, and we'll be ready to add fish before you know it. This rain battle is probably one of the best things I ever did since being here. Um, there's limits on how much water you can store, and so I made sure I'm complying with that here in New York. But one good day of rain, this is a 55 gallon barrel, and I got water for days, <laughs> so I got enough to fill the tub. Uh, what I do use is in the tub is a mosquito uh, pellet that I add in there so it doesn't draw mosquitoes, it's absolutely sealed, it captures the rain, and I capture the runoff water. As you can see, I get the water. It is crystal clear, crystal clear. I wouldn't drink it, but it's crystal clear. <laughs> but I add that to the tub. I use that to water my garden back here. And you can see everything's already coming to life. So one of the best investments I ever did. But um, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you subscribe. I'm going to bring you straight through this project from start to finish as I do every year. And uh, before I let you go... The way Mother Nature intended. Won't be running that water bill up this year. <laughs> this is D. Love, peace, and hair grease. Thumbs up, everybody. See you when I see you. I'm out. Got to start planning what fish I'm going to do this year. <laughs>